Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Building Character here at the Game Trade Media Studios in Timonium, Maryland, where we're coming to you live here on Facebook. I am your host, Rick. Uh, we are doing something a little different today uh, in regards to building character in that uh, we're going to build a scenario, a character and a scenario. So the, for a that anybody could insert into their, their campaign as a uh, adventure hook or a side trek or something like that, but it's going to involve uh, some of the miniatures that we painted that uh, Dave and I painted this week and started uh, last week. <clears throat> uh, the Whiz Kids Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures Adventurers Campsite uh, right here is the, the stuff that's in it, and you can see the campsite is put up here. A few miniatures that I have to finish painting are in there, but you can see Dave, the, the ones that are done and look really good are Dave's work, and he did an amazing job. But it is Nolzor's Campsite, or Adventurers Campsite right here, that we're using as the basis of our scenario. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is... We're gonna build a character. So the campsite has this wagon. Wagon, I've talked about it the entire time we were painting, that this wagon reminds me of those snake oil salesmen that would go around to the different villages and try to sell them all these potions and, and uh, other uh, items and wares <clears throat> to uh, you know make their riches and, 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 and gain their gold. So that's kind of what we're gonna to do today. So, whoop, ooh, oh, look at that, I left my volume up. Pro. Uh, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to build that character um, who is the uh, snake oil salesman, if you will, the potions of uh, procurement and uh, propaganda, all that stuff. Uh, so we got 5th edition D&D books here. Let's go ahead and pull out the player's handbook, and we'll get to rolling some dice. With your guys' help, we'll come up with a really cool character concept. Uh, and then... I have in front of me as well some of the other miniatures that this kids makes. We've got some Nolzors and some deep cuts, which give you some other characters and creature uh, miniatures. Uh, so I've got the human male monk, which is from the deep cuts line for Paizo and Pathfinder, but it's you know they work in all D and D and stuff campaigns. So and some Nolzors got a phase spider, and then I've also got uh, some goblins here, so we can build. From that, uh, we can add those somehow to the scenario, or we can uh, throw in some of these Pathfinder Battles pre-painted miniatures. We're gonna we're gonna do some un uh, some unboxing to show off what's in the new Maze of Death uh, boxes here uh, to help build our scenario. So this is a building character and scenario episode. So let's dive right into it and uh, <clears throat> let's roll up some stats and come up with what kind of character are we gonna look at uh, here. So let me know. What kind of what kind of um, what kind of class character and class do you think our snake oil salesperson would be, male or female? <clears throat> it's like the Wizard on Wizard of Oz. That's right. <clears throat> Craig says race need, needs to be a gnome. Jeffrey says a Goliath bard. Goliath bard is kind of cool. Um, Real quick, I'm going to share this to a group. I'm going to go to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Or if you guys could do that, that'd be great. If, the, if you're in the Dungeons and Dragons groups or any other groups like that, share this in there uh, so that I can just keep us going on this and uh, you know, share it to all your friends, if you will, and it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm going to roll some dice as we think about this to get, start getting our stats rolled up. All right, so here's our first stat. Oh, that looks painful. Yes. Three, four, five. Oh. Three, four, five, six, seven. We have a seven that will go somewhere. Next stat potential could be anything. Oh, that's better. There we go. Seventeen. So as you can tell, I roll 46, taking the highest three re and discarding the lowest um, is, the, is the way I, I go ahead and roll stats. There is the point by system, which is a, a great way to make a character as well. Next stat is 10. And remember, this isn't necessarily a heroic character as you would have as a PC. So it doesn't have to have 
a lot of great stats. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Next. All right. 10, 11, 12. It's not a bad character. That 17 is is pretty good. I think a, a good charisma for the character we're trying to put together here. Yeah? Oh, 6, 7 again. So, there we have it. So what do you guys think? Should we be making a very charismatic, but not so much strong and healthy themselves? Maybe uh, low strength, low con? Um, uh, decent, you know, average intelligence and wisdom. Uh, average dexterity. So there's a lot of options we can throw in here for our snake oil salesperson. We gotta come up with a cool name too for this character. Let's see what we got going on in here. <clears throat> Uh, gnome illusionist, gnomes, a Goliath bard. Looks like there's a lot of gnome love going on here. Male with a female assistant. That's always a good one. Love the campsite set. I use it all the time. Nice. Grizzled geek. We'll... Gnome or goblin bard. Half orc then. My character in Skyrim Special Edition Xbox One is a half giant bard warrior mod called Half Giant Race. And a tiefling warlock. There's a lot of options there, but uh, what do you guys, let, let's let it kind of roll there. Hey, Bart, thanks for joining up. The Tiefling Warlock Severus Shadowhorn. Servius. Servius Shadowhorn. That's kind of cool. Let's uh, go with, I like the idea of the character being a bard. So let's go ahead and open that up here real quick to the bard class. So if you're in the player's handbook, and you want to follow along with what we're doing, uh, please just go right to it. And the first one is going to be on page 51, The Bard, Music and Magic, Learning from Experience. It's so very cool. So we will absolutely go with a bard. Now, it's not a first level character. We want this character to be a little bit, of, you know, have some some travel on. They got a couple horses, a couple bed rolls, and you can see that there's some uh, weapons rack there. Maybe they sell, it's almost like they're a little traveling merchant always on the side of the road. Hey, you come on, or going into a village. Hey, come on up, check out my wares. By the way, I happen to have this amazing new potion and oils that you're just going to love. It'll cure everything that ails you, or it'll make you faster, stronger, you know, dun, 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 that don't kill you, will only make you stronger. You know what I'm talking about. Is this... Bart, Bart, no, this is not my character for uh, the, the thing that we're working on. No, this is just a character that is going that is a scenario that any dungeon master out there, any game master, if you feel free to, this is just something maybe you could incorporate into your game at home uh, as a side trick or, a, or an adventure hook. Um, I like the idea of it being a male character with a female, or a female, let's say it's a female character who has a male companion who has been captured, uh, and you come across the wagon on the side of the, 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 the road um, as they are, are being ransacked, but yet some, they were able to get away with the companion, of a companion being male, female, or, you know, non-gender specific. Elf Bard. Bard, what's that right there? Bard for the win. Yes, Bard for the win. Background charlatan. I agree. Charlton is a great background, especially for this kind of character. Um, but let's take a look. Class features. So it has 1d8 hit points. We'll give max hit points at first level, of course. And then what level do you think this kind of character should be? Um, background charlatan. Elf bard. Tiefling race for plus two charisma makes a better salesperson. That's actually not a bad idea. I'm thinking a female tiefling, actually. What do you guys think of that? A female tiefling who has a companion who has been captured and needs to be returned. That's kind of there. There's our adventure hook, but maybe there's even more to it. Because uh, as you can see, the wagon here, if you look right back here, there's a chain across the door and a sign. What's in the wagon? Is what 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 the, do they not want you to see or find? Lots of uh, intrigue can be incorporated into this character. Um, so we'll go with a female tiefling bard. All right, I like it. So now we need to come up with a name <coughs> for this character. 
how trusted would you be? That's true. It would depend on the world. Um, but any anybody that's a salesperson is only as trusted as they can convince you they are. So, uh, and if they're a good salesman, they're highly trusted, right? So let's give uh, the charisma of 17 to our bard. They have weapons, simple weapons, hand crossbow, so they're proficient in those things. Skills, choose any three. Dexterity and charisma are the two high points. So we'll give a 12 to dexterity. All right. A seven to strength. It's kinda, kinda tough. A seven to constitution. A 10 to wisdom. And an 11 to intelligence. There we go. Sarita Shadowhorn, Mishka, Melicity, Shadow Song. Would be, I like Melicity. Plus two makes it a nineteen on charisma. That is correct. So, she, Melicity. I like the I like Melicity as a first name. That's a really cool one, Melicity. Let's do that real quick and go to the Tiefling race here. There we go. What else we got? <clears throat> Ability score increased. Your intelligence score is increased by one, and your charisma score increased by two. So we have a 12 intelligence as well. Very nice. Tiefling's mature the same as humans. All right. They have resistances to fire damage, which will be important. You can speak, read, and write common and infernal. All right, very cool. Hope Tuflesia. I run lots of tiefling warlocks. I like a, a Melicity Tuflesia. Tuflesia? Tuflesia? She goes by Mel. <laughs> All right, there we go. We got our name. Melicity Tuf Tuflicia. Uh, just goes by Mel. You know, her friends call her Mel. And now that you're talking to her, you're obviously one of her friends. So we have all that kind of worked out. Um, so we have Bardic Inspiration and Spell Casting as their first stuff going on there. But we need to come up with... Uh, what do, you, what do you think a level for this kind of scenario would be? Like a fifth level bard, a seventh level bard that is uh, goes around and sells their wares, acquires new new stuff, makes side deals out on the road with other passersby, or maybe even, you know, does arm deals with traveling orc bands and goblins and stuff like that. You know, what goblin war band wouldn't love a nice castle forged uh, weapon instead of something that they found rusting in an old cave somewhere? Uh, but then goblins tend to be, well, if you have one, you have many, we take all, right? As goblins will do. <laughs> what level is Melicity? Yes. Uh, Bart says fourth or fifth, fourth or fifth, middle name, Mishka. I like Mishka. MMT. All right. So there we go. We got a middle name, everything going on there. Sixth level from Jeffrey. Her assistant is a Goliath or half-orc barbarian. Okay, that would be kind of funny if she's not behind and she needs you to go retrieve her assistant and it turns out that the assistant is a Goliath. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, why and how did a Goliath get captured and she got left behind? Or did she have to trade him off in order to keep all her goods and she doesn't really care so much? Uh, there's a lot of cool little story background that we can throw in there. So. Um, I'm going to look up really quick um, the <clears throat> charlatan um, background. So we can kind of look how that would go in there as well. All right. Acolyte. Nope. <clears throat> Criminal charlatan. There we go. Skill proficiencies, de deception, and sleight of hand. You get those. Proficient in deception and sleight of hand as well. Disguise kit and forgery kit. 
favorite s schemes. Okay, now, like we've always done in the past, I can roll on the charts to find out what all of their, you know, their scam, their personality traits, ideals, bon uh, bond, and flaw are, or we can just pick off the list. But I'm, one, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to say, roll for it. So a Goliath polymorph as a halfling taken in that form. I like it. So what do you guys think? You think we should roll to find out what the... Uh, what the uh, bond and flaw and all that wonderful stuff is. That's right, rolling is fun for any NPC. Again, if you guys would also be so kind as to uh, share this, that would be great uh, so that we can make sure that this is in all of the groups and people can participate as well. That'd be great. And I'm gonna do a real quick share in a group to Dungeons, do this one, post there, and one last one here to another group. I apologize, everybody. Right there, post. All right. So the first thing is we have our scam. Favorite scams. Every charlatan has an angle he or she uses in preference to others. Uh, choose a favorite scam or roll on the table below. Um, I insinuate, my, insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weaknesses and secure their fortunes. I put on new identities like clothes. I run sleight of hand cons or s on street corners. Uh, I convince people that worthless junk is worth their hard-earned coin. Um, let's hope for a six, because that's one I would pick. Well, that one wasn't going to roll a six, obviously. A two, I shave coins or forge documents. That is a good scam. That's all it could always be the backup scam. It's like, oh, you need to get uh, some documents forged and so you can go into the city uh, for whatever reason or show, you know, show your birthright, all that stuff. Absolutely. Scam is shave coins or forge documents. Because everybody's got to have a good scam. And this one is going to use them both. But I also like the idea that convincing people of their junk is worthless, or that worthless junk is worth their coin. Um, that's another one. This one is all f sorts of scammy. There we go. So let us get to it. So what we're doing, for if you're just tuning in, we're doing a building character episode here at Game Trade Media, where we're taking the Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures from WizKids Adventure Campsite, which is right here, uh, which we painted on our Painting Happy Little Minis episodes, and we're taking this and we're, turn we're building a character for this as a potential character or an adventure hook or a um, campaign starter uh, around a character that we have uh, decided is a tiefling bard female named Melicity uh, uh, Tuflicia with a middle name Mishka, but she just goes by Mel. If you're her friend, which obviously you're our friend, and Mel loves you because you're here and wants to buy Mel's wares. And uh, so Mel is our our, our uh, snake oil salesman, our con our con person, uh, and is just trying their best to get your coin. But in the scenario. Her assistant has been taken captive by some brigands who have, when you roll upon the, the campsite, she is still being accosted by these individuals, and they have, and a group of them have already taken off with her assistant, and you need to retrieve them. So, uh, but we're doing our personality traits, ideals, and rich and bonds and stuff, and we are going to make her a sixth level character, based on the chat. Fake magic scrolls, yeah, absolutely. Uh, puts like glamour on it and then sells them as actual scrolls, which is great because even in the in the uh, uh, campfire uh, miniature set here, there is a scroll. It's very tiny. It's right there. You can barely see it, but there is a scroll uh, bit that you can use to, um, yeah, give to the party. Be like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I've got this scroll of detect magic. If you detect magic on it, it'll tell you it's magic. <clears throat> uh, forge patents of nobility. <laughs> yes. Uh, very cool. Scammy McScam face. That's exactly who this is. But we are going to make her a sixth level, and we're going to roll now for her personality trait, which is a D8. 
So I'll take a D8 out of our tub of dice here, our big, there we go. The D8 has been acquired, dropping it, a three. Flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. It's like when you're a guy my size going into the mall to buy a pair of pants or a shirt, which you know isn't gonna fit because they don't make six X's at these uh, stores in the mall. But the young lady working there is gonna say, oh, it makes you look great, that you know, Smedium that you just tried on. You should buy it. Flattery works, you buy the shirt and only wear it in that you know one time when you're trying it on. So yeah, I like it. Uh, flattery is the preferred trick for getting what they want. And what snake oil salesman isn't going to uh, use flattery uh, to get what they want, especially when it comes to getting your gold into their pocket? It's preferred trick. All right, we like that. So next we have our ideal, which is a D6. So we'll find out what this character's ideal is. Uh, character again is Melicity, our, our female, ooh, a six. I'm determined to make something of myself. Okay, so they want to make something of themselves. They want to be a rich merchant, not just a, a roadside or a rollabout a vagabond uh, merchant, kind of like a Khajiit, <laughs> you know, just rolling about. You know, you have coin, I have wares. All my wares are worthless. And this, this wonderful potion and these beautiful scrolls are available at a decent price if you're just willing to pay it. So, yeah, this individual wants to become more than that um, and it has large aspirations. Uh, let me write that down. Determined to make something of themselves. All right. Next we have the bond, and that is another D6. Cool. Save you the role. She's a harlot. <laughs> uh, that's funny. She wears video game bikini mail. No. No, Bikini Mill is not good. This one is probably gonna have very colorful and uh, flamboyant uh, uh, attire so as to, again, seem very flashy, but you know, it's kind of like, um, I, I, I'm gonna go back to, uh, what is it, uh, A Knight's Tale, when they take the tent, because it looked fancy, and they cut it up to make him his outfit to wear to the dance. Uh, so it's kind of like that. It may look fancy, but it may be just junk. And that's the whole illusion that this uh, bard uses to get your coin. It is, looks flashier than they are. Um, so the bond on this character is a six. I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it. I seek to atone for my misdeeds, but might never be able to forgive myself. Boo. Yeah. Boo. I don't say. Why, why, this person that we're creating, I, I think, would be like, ah. Who cares? I got all the money. Pssst. I don't, you know. So what do you guys, you think we should take that or should we re-roll? Oh, so Lady Gaga. <laughs> Over leather armor. It is said the customer is always right. The right one to empty their pockets for a, for a Tickle Me Kobold. Yeah, uh, why would I not have a Tickle Me Kobold and a couple, uh, you know, uh, Teddy Rucks goblins? <clears throat> all right. We could make that work. A swindled and ruined, they swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it, and somehow they feel like they need to atone. I mean, we can make it work. We can figure it out. And maybe that's why, maybe they swindled and did this, and their atonement is the, the, the companion that's with them is a descendant or the, a child or a, um, a relative to the one that they swindled, and that person died, and now you've taken on the, uh, the, the reason that they're with you is because you kind of feel that atonement is by providing for this individual in service. I mean, you treat them like crap, but it's your way of atoning for taking someone that may have done a lot of good for you and ruining their career and their life or whatever, and now this is how you atone for it. And you're like, do I really need that guy? Or, eh, no, but dang it. You know, I like it. You swindled. I'm going to put that down and come back to it. Flaws. These are always the best. <clears throat> Again, another D6 on this flaws here. Uh, Walter said reroll. Maybe it's less a tone, but more get themselves out of hot water. It could be <laughs> the Tickle Me Cobalt. I love it. Uh, all right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and roll the D6 for the last part on Melicity. Uh, Teflicia, who is our bard uh, tiefling, 
uh, snake oil person sell, sells everything that they have, will sell you the shirt off their back for the right coin, but it will probably end up just having their shirt on at the end of the day. So here we go, last roll, A1. Uh, apparently, she, she can't, uh, she can't resist a pretty face. I can see that. She's a tiefling. She may have some uh, issues where she may feel like, you know, this is not, I, why was I cursed with this beautiful 19 charisma? <laughs> and yet you also are very attractive. You know, again, using that flattery, it, it all kind of spins, uh, spins in it. So I, I can see, uh, even if the well, leader... Well, Rick, you won't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. True. <clears throat> but uh, I, another thing about it, it, it can be very f interesting for character or party dynamic is when the party uh, eliminates the threat that is currently affecting um, Melissity at her wagon on the side of the road and she gets get, starts giving them all the information about this is what uh, went down. My companion has been taken by these guys' uh, cohorts off into the, into the hills off in the distance there um, for whatever reason. Uh, but maybe the party may have a party leader that has been identified, but may not be the most charismatic, and she will only speak to the most charismatic character, making it a very uncomfortable uh, dialogue uh, when the leader it would probably be the one that would want to be, you know, running that conversation or, 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 or you know being in charge of that dialogue so it could make it for a really interesting di um, dynamic and role-playing opportunity so that's also a lot of fun has a thing for elves can two bards out char charisma one another that's a great question can they i don't know so um i feel like we kind of got our flesh on this character well flesh this character out but we were also building a scenario so we know we have melicity our six level bard uh, tiefling female who is all about selling you her stuff but has fallen under an attack of some sort so let's kind of come up with who attacked her and everything right who is the who was the threat was it goblins was it human male monk brigands or just brigands in general but I feel like we need to open up some boxes here some of these pre-painted miniatures and kind of find out maybe we can take some uh, ideas out of these because it's always fun to get some new miniatures and take a look at them so let's do that all right so these are Pathfinder battles by WizKids um, and Paizo and uh, NECA all have an, a hand in it. Uh, for Maze of Death, pre-painted minis. So they're really, really nice. So uh, there are four collectible figures inside. And in this particular one, we got, ooh, this is kind of neat. A giant moray eel. Does not fit the scenario we're building, but it's still pretty cool. We'll put that off to the side. Uh, if we can, let's try to take one, at least one mini from each of these boxes to add to the uh, scenario that we're trying to build as a side side track here, or a, or a, uh, a hook to the beginning. Um, ooh, this is kind of neat. A uh, penagalan. A uh, it's the the floating head of a female on the guts of a body. I'm going to put it over here in the close up right here and see if we can get a, a better shot of it. Now nah, it's kind of tiny, it's kind of weird looking. Um, so there's that one. We'll just set her up here for now and we'll take a look at these other ones and see if there's anything in here that can absolutely kind of fit the bill. Uh, yeah, we got ourselves a rat folk artilleryman. So a, a rat folk crossbowman. I love rat folk. So I would, right now that rat folk, I'm gonna put it down by the wagon is something I would very much like in a, in a scenario like this. Um, a diabolical mystic, so a female or a male um, wizard mystic type. It's kind of a cool little mini. All right, where is, that's our fourth, all right. Okay, put them right back here. There we go. Now let's go into the next box. box. Those two right there are kind of like the, the the leads on this one. What's in the box? Oh yes, mini unboxing porn. Yeah, where? Yeah, I love where at and th as Steve Guild members and stuff. So our next box consists of what is that? A Cyclops Mystic. That's cool. I probably wouldn't use it in a 
starter uh, event, but I would definitely use it in a, um, you know, further on down the line. Let's see what else we got in here. This bag is, there we go. Oh, that is cool. A, a Pitborn fighter. That is slick. Put that one right there. Let's see if you guys can see it. I almost feel like we probably should have put the rotator up in here on this one. Wonder if we uh, could re re uh, replace it over here real quick. Oh uh, yeah, another rat folk, an alchemist. Can't go wrong with that. Look at that little bugger. He's got like a little green thing, and that would work very well in al a rat folk alchemist uh, because of the potions and wares. Maybe they, maybe uh, Mel already has some sort of dealings with the rat folk for trading stuff, and they just they feel like maybe they've been cheated one too many times, and now they're just gonna take what they want. Then we have a purple fungus that will go over here. I'm gonna take this down real quick this up here. Maybe we can just put them here as well. We can get a, no. Okay. No worries. Getting pretty ready. Pit fighter is her guard. Could be a, you know, a pit born fighter is really cool. I like, I like that as a, as a potential add into the uh, adventure set there. Now we're into the next box. This is fun guys. Building a scenario based on an unboxing. How cool is that? If you were to go out to your local game store and be like, hey, I'd like to get a brick of the new maze of death miniatures or any of the other pre-painted miniatures that they have and be like all right i'm going to take at least one from every box all right and then uh make that into a, a, a scenario for the next adventure coming up and that would be pretty cool all right so now we got another a, a juju zombie that's kind of cool Let's see how, how do they look over here if i just do this yeah, so we got the Juju Zombie. Okay, we'll move that out. Right there. there we go. We got the Juju Zombie over here. That's kind of cool. But the stuff that we aren't going to use. And grab. I love the rat, the rat folk. Look at that. There's the, there's the Mystic right there. And then we've got just the rat folk artilleryman who's just, you know, a little crossbow guy. He's like, you know, the stick up artist. So that's pretty cool. Now let's see what else we got here. This one is, wow, this is crazy. We've got a, a Talmandor, which is like an, an angelic um, being here. So you got this guy. I wouldn't use, again, I wouldn't use this in this initial scenario and uh, adventure hook, just because that is way, way more, uh, but that could be a messenger or something that later on down the line. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we have got an, Uderfron Necromancer, so we put that one down there. That's a cool one, which could go along the lines with the this guy. All right, so we got that one. The Necro, yeah, this guy. Here's the Necromancer, the Pitborn, or the Juju Zombie, the Rat guys, and then uh, this one. Uh, he has the Pitborn Fighter. There we go. Um, we got another big guy here. So this is cool. What if this, okay, what if this is the companion? All right, the companion, uh, you know, minotaur horns, very, uh, very magical. You can uh, grind them up, make all sorts of cool potions and powders and such. But look at this guy. This could be the companion. That is amazing. And he's been taken because maybe the rat folk alchemist is like, I just want the horns for myself. And for some reason, they were able to take this guy. I don't see it. He kind of looks like Beast from Beauty and the Beast because he's just, and he's huge, but you never know. It could be very, maybe he's a gentle, yeah, that's why he has a crossbow. He doesn't, he doesn't want to get his, his hooves uh, dirty. Very, very aristocratic uh, uh, minotaur of some sort. But the character is actually a minotaur artillery piece that is such a cool little miniature and it would be so funny you find this tiefling female bard who has a bodyguard companion who's a minotaur uh who's kind of a gentle soul um but she was using his family uh, to to basically 
right, a high level sleep spell would still work on this creature, potentially. We got another Juju zombie. I feel like I would actually use the Juju zombies, or as zombies, or just whatever, in this as well as a as a defensive uh, piece up in the further into the campaign or into the adventure scenario. You have to fight a couple Juju zombies. A Gate Hell Knight. This could just be a, a freaking assassin in any assassin's guild. This guy looks cool. He's got the red cloak and armor with some leather, black leather, uh, and then he has a, a little flaming red dagger, which is really nice. So I'd probably use that one as well in some capacity. Like maybe <clears throat> he was uh, part of the hit on this um, on Mel. We have a wood golem. Again, I probably wouldn't use a wood golem in this one, but uh, it's a nice looking miniature, and I would absolutely use it in a, something else later on down the road. Because <clears throat> if I were to like build a whole adventure scenario around all these that we're pulling out, it would be a lot of fun. I think that, and that could be a lot of fun for you as you're building not just your characters and NPCs for adventures and, and campaign settings, but also if you, again, were to pick up a brick and by a brick, I mean I think it's like ten of these in, come in one brick. And uh, after you've kind of filled out your scenarios on this and you bought a brick and you're like, okay, based on everything in this, is it what the next couple adventures are going to be based around these creatures and characters? And it really can be a lot of fun. So the next one I picked up was a Deep Lurker. Oh, this could be uh, absolutely like a, a mid-boss that you would have to fight. Uh, looks pretty cool. It's got this whole, like... Uh, crab looking thing that would be like in the under you know in the caverns under under a mountain or something or you know going into the underdark and uh it just looks like a piece of rock against the, you know up on the wall and as you're walking by it just snatches you up starts and you start your combat scenario and get to it that'd be a lot of fun uh the paints on these are actually pretty decent uh give you a little bit of a close-up on the uh on the rock Okay, pull it back a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so I mean, the paints aren't too bad, but that's another great thing about miniatures and what we do. Uh, you can always do repaints on these. If you don't like it, just, you know, reprime it and paint it to your to how you would like it. But uh, if I were in a dungeon or in the caverns underneath uh, in the Underdark, and I, this would kind of you know, work for me as far as like it's, it, it can appear to be a part of the wall or overhanging, because you got like the stalagmite, stalactite tops on the creature here, and then when it attacks, definitely would need a, a perception check and stuff, so they're not too bad. But again, you can always do your own repaints, which is always a lot of fun. Yeah, it does have like an Umber Hulk look to it. Oh, look at this. Uh, okay, so again, maybe not, Part or it could be just an, an, an amalgam of different races that uh, have banded together that deal with Mel on trading stuff. But this is a lizard folk Meyerborn has a big scaled shield and like a, a serrated sword right there. That is so cool. That's a cool looking mini. We'll just set that one right there and then kind of turn a little bit. There we go. And then we've got. <clears throat> So it looks like this could actually be a really fun little scenario or campaign to jump into. Oh yeah, a pretty goblin. That could also be <laughs> this. <laughs> All right, so this one, I don't know if it's gonna be blurry, but it is a goblin that is dressed in a dress and has blonde hair and a rose in its hair. Uh, it's very cool. You know what I might do? Uh, for all of you that are watching, I think I'm gonna take some pictures of these and put them up on our page. Uh, so you guys can check them out. These look like a lot of fun. So after that, the program, uh, what I'll do is take pictures of the miniatures that we unboxed and put them up there, and you guys can get better better looks at them and stuff. It'd be a lot of fun. And then next, we have got for this scenario. Oh, this is kind of cool too. A were bear. So with the rat folk, and you could have a were bear, and the were bear could be a, a creature that could absolutely maybe hold its own against a minotaur. Uh, and and far, as far as like wrestling them down and getting them out of the, you know, uh, as far as the abduction side goes. But a werebear is also a very strong opponent, so this would have to be a, a little bit more medium sized um, uh, campaign beginning. Next, we have an M. Fizzbean. 
as is Bane. It's a, it's a, it's a cat dog snake. It's got a head on both ends, of the of the snake here, um, which is kind of cool. Now, earlier I said what could be in the wagon and where are they getting all of their their wares and potions and stuff. What would it, what would it be kind of cool if it actually was if the snake, this this creature was in the wagon and is what is providing. The, the toxins and, and oils and stuff for the for the potions, and that's why they don't want you to enter it. So this could actually be inside the wagon. That would be really cool, right? So, I mean, I would use it then. What a, you know, that's what I would do with it. Um, yeah, these are, I'm sorry, these are from the Maze of Death Pathfinder Battles, uh, uh, pre-painted miniature set. So, um, but what we're doing is we're unboxing them to add to uh, a scenario or uh, uh, a hook adventure hook that you could play at your home uh, or any campaign um, and just kind of showing you guys you know a fun way if you are gonna you know get some miniatures add them to your collection you know go to your local game store grab a, a brick you, like all the players in your group can be like all right we'll each buy one uh, for the DM or for for our campaign but the DM will take them and then take out you know you guys unbox it he'll unbox them and then pick the miniatures and throw them into the campaign to f for you guys to fight against. I think it's a great, uh, and with Christmas coming up, everybody should, you know, sh if you are in a campaign and have a DM that uh, you guys absolutely love and is, is, is providing hours of entertainment for you, because we all know the dungeon masters out there put in so much time and effort to make the campaign fun for you, the players. Um, if all the players were to buy their DM one of these uh, and take it to them and give it to them for Christmas, that right there can just fill up your guys' enjoyment pool because there's going to be so many new miniatures that are going to be added to the campaigns and new 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 looks and everything if you guys play with miniatures and your thing. Here's another uh, Rat Folk Artillery. So I'm really thinking that it could be the Amalgam. We've got, um, uh, we've got the Rat Folks that I would say would definitely be a part of this uh, initial scenario. And we've got... Um, <clears throat> the wear bear might be the muscle of this little group, and the lizard folk guy too. So there could be your big muscle guys that handle this, and they're actually led by, let's say, the diabolical mystic is like the big boss that at the end of the scenario. But we still have a few more things you know, that could absolutely change a little bit, maybe. I love it. Here we go. Next, we've got a Blight Druid. Blight Druids are also pretty cool uh, and could absolutely be a, you know, if the Bard is selling wares and stuff like that, a Blight Druid could absolutely be someone that uh, could be a nemesis to that character. Oh, neat. There's a, um, looks like a, a wall piece or a, some sort of terrain piece in here as well. Yeah. That's kind of cool. A little dungeon door of some sort. You can just add that to. Yeah, that's kind of neat. And I'd be speaking to some uh, stuff coming out from the future from Paizo. Oh, this is kind of cool too. Here we go. We've got a, a Minotaur cleric. That could be the one that got put to ruin, and that's her son right there. That's the, 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 the Minotaur that was uh, ruined by Mel. Ruined, uh, just feels like now we have to do right by her. She, the cleric, was ruined. Uh, is, yeah, the pretty goblin is a face that Mel can't resist. I love it. One last box, everybody, and then we'll have gone through all of them. Then we can kind of like, we'll set up our little scenario here and uh, see how it all plays out. And then, if, you know, if you guys already have some of these miniatures and we're thinking of uh, ways to use them in a campaign, eh, here you go. You got the, we've built a, a scenario uh, for you guys here. We got a another lizard folk warrior. This guy has like a like a Aztecian uh, serrated blade as well on his. I don't know if that's is that a good spot for it. Yeah, it's not bad. Then we've got <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. More. There's only this is the last box for this episode, guys. Oh, cool. Uh, Erd, Erdfriend Royer. He's kind of like blue. He's got lots of leather banding around him. There we go. How's that look? You see him right, right here? Again, I don't think I would use him in this particular 
setup for the adventure, but uh, absolutely something to be used later on. An Ulatkini warrior. Um, okay. Uh, again, I wouldn't use them in this scenario, but I'd definitely use them because you know Ulakini are the like you know the the um, undersea like frog people. Uh, but with the with the Mori eel and him, that that right there's a that right there's a scenario uh, in any combat, uh, in any adventure, absolutely. And then last one is this big old guy here. I don't know what the heck this is. Looks like a freaking hell spawn, but it is called. The Viper Vine. Oh, that's cool. The Blight Druid and this right here would go perfect together. The Blight Druid and the Viper Vine. I'm going to move these out of the way so you guys can all see this. It's out the way, Viper Vines, or everybody, for the Viper Vine. Look at that. That thing is crazy. And what? talk about, you know, a, you know, a perception check is going to be needed in any combat scenario that would include that. And then, of course, the Blight Druid as, you know, the guardian of this area. And this is the, the Viper Vine is one of his guardians as well. Yeah, these are all really cool. So based on that, and then, of course, you know, not just the, you know, Maze of Death uh, miniatures, but there's also Nolzors and Deep Cuts that WizKids puts out, which are your unpainted, pre-primed with Vallejo Prime miniatures. That you, All these are available at your local game store. They can go well with either Dungeons & Dragons, 5th edition, 1st edition, any edition D&D, and Pathfinder. So absolutely super cool stuff uh, for building a scenario. So in the end, we've got our adventurous campsite where Mel, our tiefling bard, resides. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can get a nice good look at it here. And this would be, so we got our, our, our setup here of, of, of the campsite. I would absolutely incorporate in that scenario the rat folk and the pretty goblin. Right, so the ratlings and the rat folk there. The werebear as well. The two lizard folk guys. Would have all part of that initial, you know, they, these ones may have, the, the three bigs here would probably have stolen away with her companion, the Minotaur of some sort, because yeah, you're right, a sleep spell could still take down the Minotaur of, and, and stuff. And then of course, uh, the big boss would be the, uh, the Diabolical Mystic. So we got the Diabolical Mystic, Werebear, Lizard Folk, Ratlings, that'll be the ones that the party comes upon with the pretty goblin. Companion is, is the big minotaur that it's taken away. And if you were to venture and try to get inside the wagon, there'd also be this giant two-headed snake that is in there that provides all the snake oil and everything. And it would all depend. You could have so much fun with this. It could, it could be all sorts of critters inside there, that just being one of the bigger ones. And then along the path, as you're going out into the in, off into the woods, into the hills beyond, to recover the companion, you come across um, the the blight druid, and then the blight druid in, could be someone that you uh, may defeat if it's an evil blight druid, and but you don't kill them, and they come back later, or you have a secondary encounter where you would then have this freaking uh, viper vine that you have to deal with, with the Blight Druid as you've uh, increased in level. And then you've got the, the Juju Zombies and the, and the Necromancer uh, that you know would work with that. Um, even the Blight Druid could have the Wood Golem, potentially, who knows, as another companion. There's just so much you can do with just those little bricks, the, the, the boxes, to, to give you our, and your players and everybody just hours of uh, entertainment and fun building scenarios around it. So there's all sorts of stuff that can be done. Um, Mel Melissa uh, uh, Tuflicia is, an, is, an, is a great character. I'm going to flesh this one out uh, some more. But there you go, everybody. That is building character and building a scenario for any campaign adventure uh, that you guys are playing. And if you need it, you know, uh, you know just rewatch this and find these miniatures. Go out and collect them and add them to your, to your uh, inventory and... It would just be perfect, right? So...
I'm gonna try to, looks like my phone decided it wanted to do a system update, but I'm gonna see if I can pull it back up here so I can catch what all the rest of this is. All right. <clears throat> I'll be painting those today after the show. See you, man. Talk to you later. Got to run. All right. Hey, everybody, be good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. That has been uh, Building Character here at Game Trade Media. I am Rick. I've been your host. We did a little fifth edition. We did Melicity, a tiefling bard who is of sixth level, uh, who drives this wagon and sells her wares and got caught up with some bad folk. And you have been as the party and adventurers have been tasked with recovering her companion who's been taken up into the hills beyond. Uh, and maybe there's some treasure involved at the end of that. So a cool little scenario. Go to your local game store. Uh, you can pick up all these wonderful miniatures there. If they don't have them, ask them to order them for you and add them to your collection. And again, because the holidays are coming up and the dungeon masters and the game masters of all these amazing games that all of the players out there are enjoying, uh, should be given, shown some love, buy them a box of miniatures and let them uh, add that to your fun for the 2018. So on that note, have a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. And we'll also see you at the game store. Have a great one. Don't forget to subscribe to Game Trade Media. Leave a like and comment on what videos you'd like to see next.